Well, we are still out in the Fredericksburg, Virginia area, and today we are at the site of Stonewall Jackson's death. So this is a marker that shows where Stonewall Jackson died. He actually died in this building right here, which was um, was the farm office. So this is a marker that shows where Stonewall Jackson died. He actually died in this building right here, which was um, was the farm office when this yeah. was a farm. And just so happened that this is where he was like, he was pretty close to death. Mm -hmm. So he had to kind of take, take refuge in there. He got shot, uh, friendly fire. Yeah. That's got that. shot by the good guys. Yeah. Lost his arm. They buried his arm up in Locust Grove, which is about 45 minutes from here. Yeah. And then he died here of pneumonia, but the, the pneumonia was because of the hemorrhagic shock because he'd lost so much blood. So he goes in there and he dies. And then um, they take him to Lexington, Virginia, where he is buried. Mm. But his arm's in Locust Grove. <laughs> he, he's got two locations. <laughs> well, he's got the death site. <laughs> He's got his arm, and, that's it. and then he's and got his, his body. body. So he's out. he's all over the place. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. That kind of gives you an idea of what it would have looked like. This is the only building that's that's still there. That would be the main house. Uh, that's the farm office, and then that is the goat barn. And so that's what it would have looked like in the days when Stonewall Jackson actually came here. And now you can see the only thing left is the is the farm office. I like when they do that and they even put like detail back here like you know th this is where they the soldiers are camped out they, you know they they've brought Stonewall and he's in here I mean and the rest of the guys are just camped out there kind of waiting on us you can see even like down to like where the the wagon is and they're bringing the casualty and is that Stonewall Jackson or is that just another troop because I'm sure he probably wasn't the only one that was hit he's just the one that was you know everybody cares about he was the general so but it's cool that they do stuff like this to kind of give you an idea of what it would look like. What you got over here? The last picture ever of him was okay. two weeks before he died. All right. But then the picture of his wife and daughter Yeah. says that she never remarried and she wore mourning clothes for the remainder of her life. Wow. So she really never got over it. She went dark and stayed dark. Yeah. Yeah. You can see out here, this is where the main house would have stood that was the big brick structure that i showed you in the picture before and you can see the the posts that mark the corners of where the house sat i wish it was still here so you could see it and there's the entrance of the farm office this is where stonewall jackson would have been would have been taken into he was hit uh may 4th 1863 uh so two days it took him to get him here comes in here and he lived for six days before he died Hey! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to put the uh, phone against the window here and see if you can see inside. Oh yeah, you can see. I can't really pan very much because if no, I do it, it, it'll glare. But you can see in here, this is uh, the room where the officers would come and relax and write letters and stuff while they were waiting for the physicians to attend to um, General Jackson. Uh, he was not in this room, but he was in an, another room in the house. Well, we're at the Fredericksburg Battlefield now, and uh, inside the visitor center they have this. And I, I had no idea that anybody in the Civil War wore anything like this, but apparently the 114th Pennsylvania did. And this is Private George Murray wore this into battle here in Fredericksburg. And so it's just interesting. I'd never seen any depictions of this, pictures of anything showing in uniforms like this but then you look over this painting and it shows the battle of gettysburg and a lot of these guys are wearing the same uniform you found something interesting it is interesting like i guess now that i know what it is i see it but at first i didn't see it that this was a shoe okay. part of a shoe and this bayonet was through the shoe so they obviously were stabbed in the foot and there were still bones oh my god in the shoe this is funny right here. During the battle, a soldier forgot to withdraw his ramrod from his weapon, and he fired it with the ramrod in there, and it went through this piece of wood, 
on a fence on the battlefield had to have been a private. It was either a private or a lieutenant for sure. <laughs> it's one or the other. It's true. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> oh man, look at this. This is all shells, shells found. found on the battlefield. This whole big tube full of rounds. I wonder how many is in there. The cylinder contains more than 10,000 bullets. You should do a game where if you guess it right, you win something. Yeah. I can't believe it's already been over two years since we yeah. got our RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. And our sleep has been great. Phenomenal. It's been crazy, life changing. Sleep impacts your posture, mm -hmm. your mood, and your overall health. Yes. And when it comes to that stuff, you really don't want to rely on the plywood-like mattresses <laughs> that come in RVs when you buy your RV brand new. Yeah. So we have the Aurora Lux from RV Mattress with the cooling technology that keeps our bodies at a perfect 88 degree sleeping temperature. Yes, and we also have their cooling pillows, their bamboo cotton sheets, and the weighted blanket. We love it so much that we even got a mattress from my mom. Mm -hmm. And she's loving it too, and she doesn't live in an RV. Exactly. Which goes to show you, you don't have to live in an RV to buy an RV mattress from Brooklyn Bedding. They're for everybody, and they come in regular sizes or RV sizes. An RV mattress by Book and Bedding also offers you a 120 night sleep trial, 10 year warranty, and free shipping from their factory in Arizona. The best part of all of it is we can save you 25%. All you have to do is click on the link in the description of this video, go over to RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, and type in the promo code WAGS at checkout. Well, we're going on the walking tour. There's a walking tour and a driving tour. We're going on the walking tour first, and it starts you off in the uh, Fredericksburg National Cemetery where a lot of Civil War soldiers are buried. There's lots of monuments like this. Yeah. This one up here. So we'll walk through here and check out some of these yeah. some of these graves and hopefully there's some interesting stuff on the walking tour. It doesn't it's not like an audio thing or anything, but there are little placards as you walk. They said it takes about I guess 30 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes kind of depending on how long you want to walk through the cemetery yeah. and how many placards you want to sit there and read and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You could definitely see why this would be an ideal place you're up on top of this hill got good vantage points so for military strategy you always want the high ground and this would definitely be a good spot for it well the confederacy won this battle union army took over 12,000 casualties at fredericksburg the confederacy only took around 6,000 but so somewhere around 20,000 troops were killed on both sides of it this was a pivotal battle for the confederates because they're so close to richmond from here that if the Union Army would have won here at Fredericksburg, they would have been able to push south to uh, to Richmond, and the war probably would have ended a lot sooner than it did. So this uh, battle for the Confederacy kept the war alive for them. Well, this is interesting. At the top of the hill on the other side of the wall here, there is a, a walled-in area, and this is a cemetery that was already here before the Battle of Fredericksburg. It was a private cemetery. These walls were already here during the battle. And uh, Confederate soldiers actually used this to bring their casualties, treat their casualties, and use these walls as protection while the battle was going on so that they would have some cover and concealment while they are, you know, taking a quick break or treating their casualties or just trying to get out of the fight for a minute. But you could tell, like, this would be a good area I'm a medic in the army, so I know if I had casualties, this would be a great place to bring them in here. The only problem is if the Union Army knew you were in here, there's one way in and one way out. Yeah, and they come in here and you get ambushed. You might get out if you're a healthy guy. You jump over the wall, <laughs> but all your casualties are still in here and they're just going to come in here and just stick them with bayonets and be done yeah. with it. We're still up on top of this hill and you can see the old uh, cannons. This would have been lined with cannons though. Several different units. This way, this way, all the way down there, looking out over this. Union soldiers coming from this way. That's Fredericksburg down there. So the Confederates had the high ground and they had artillery up here. Man, it would have been tough uh, for the Union soldiers to even have a chance to get up to the top of this hill. Uh, this is the Brompton house up here on the hill. And 
It was is interesting to me because it was used as a hospital for the Union yeah. soldiers yeah. at one point. And they say that if you get up close to it, you can see where it's been speckled with uh, bullet, bullet holes. holes and other shrapnel and things like that. Yeah. It's owned by um, Mary Washington University now. Yeah. And the president of the university lives there. I guess whoever's the president at the time lives there. Yeah. But it would be really cool to be able to go inside there <laughs> yeah, and see what it looks like. Or even if you could go up close to it yeah. and see it. But it's a private residence, you're so you're not allowed to go up there. Yeah. But it was used in the Civil War. This here is the actual wall that soldiers hid behind, fought behind. It is original to the uh, Civil War. It wouldn't have been like this, though. Those earthworks behind this would not have been there. This wall would have just been up, and you would have been able to go on either side of this wall. And uh, actually, the Confederates used this for cover and concealment, so they would have been on this side of the wall fighting that way because the Union soldiers were coming from Fredericksburg that way. Well, this is interesting stuff. This is Richard Kirkland. He was 19 years old when he fought here, and he was a Confederate, so he would have been fighting up there. Union soldiers down here just getting annihilated by the Confederacy up on the hill. Well, he jumps over the wall and he starts rendering aid to Union soldiers who were wounded by the Confederates. And at first the Union soldiers were shooting at him, uh, but they stopped when they saw what he was doing. So he, he did help them a lot. They erected this uh, monument in his honor because, you know, he was helping both. And I can relate to that because I've had to treat enemy soldiers, um, whether you want to or not part of the Geneva Convention but back then but that wasn't even a thing, a thing yeah. so it was just honorable of him to help people who were wounded either yeah, way they let him do it for two hours yeah two hours he they was out there fire at him. and let him do his thing which was really cool yeah. and it's unfortunate because he later was killed at the Battle of Chukamonga in Georgia oh, another yeah. battle so uh, but at the time he was only 19 years old so pretty pretty valiant pretty heroic for a kid his age yeah, yeah. Well, this is crazy. This house was here during the Civil War, and you can't go inside anymore. But you can see they've redone some of the stuff on the outside. I'm going to put the camera against the window. If you look off to the left over there, you can see all the bullet holes on the wall and through the door that came through during the fighting down here. And then on the outside, you can, you can see a couple of bullet holes. That are still visible. We're at the visitor center now for the birthplace of our nation's first president, George Washington. Right. And I already see a little cutout yeah. where you put your face in, uh -huh. take a picture, and, and become George Washington. Yeah. So that's going down for sure. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure they have some information in here that we're going to learn about. And then you can, you can walk around the grounds and see where um, where George Washington was born. A little windy yeah. today, but at least the sun's out. It's cool that this was only 10 minutes from the campground. Yeah, it's right like, down the road. Crazy. This is cool. They got different colonial gear that you can wear. And then you get up here, take your picture. So that's going down too. <laughs> well, this is not George Washington's house. <laughs> nor is this one. Nor is this. <laughs> nor is that or that or that <laughs> none of the structures out here are what Original. they were out back then and the landscape was even changed a lot from the time that george oh, yeah. washington lived here the so george washington was born here and he ran around this land played grew up here um his sister died out here in one of the winters because in the winters the roads are impassable you're not getting a doctor out here a doctor's not getting to you you just gotta yeah. either figure it out or die and so his sister died one winter when he was three. And then um, when he was 11, his dad died out here. And so he had to help run the farm. Uh, it's beautiful out here. Right out here is the uh, Pope's Creek, which leads into the Potomac River. There's some sheep out here. Some chicken coops. When this was a working farm, when George and his family were here, they would have had sheep they would have had chickens ducks ox to run the the plows hogs hogs for eating probably some turkeys guinea stuff like that farm stuff oh, this is trooper and trooper is a retired law enforcement horse 
And he has been in the parades at the inauguration of four presidents. Four, maybe five. George H.W. Uh, and then Clinton. And then George W. And then Obama. So he's, he's seen a lot. And so now he's going to spend his retirement out here at the birthplace of George Washington on this beautiful farm. So very well deserved, sir. <laughs> Good job. He don't seem too excited about it. No. <laughs> all right, we're at the cemetery out here, the family cemetery. And let me run down who all is out here. First of all, it doesn't look like it used to. They've they've restored this back in the 1930s. They built this wall around it that wasn't there. They um, redid these tombs and made it look all pretty and stuff. So the big one here in the middle is George Washington's great grandfather, who is John Washington. And his house was here somewhere because he was, he established this first and then when he died he gave it the 8500 acres to the family and then over here is george washington's father and on either side of his great grandfather is george washington's uncles who were the sons of of john and brother of his of his dad and then on the far side is george washington's half brother who they had the same dad but he was the son of the first wife of George Washington's father. Uh, she died and he got remarried to Mary and they had George. And then there's some children that are buried out here also. They had two young children. Uh, George Washington's great grandfather had a couple of children who died very young, one 10 years old and one six months old. And then this is Jane Butler. This is the first wife of George Washington's yeah. dad. Did you get all Did you that? get all that? <laughs> Maybe run that back and play it again, but family I to, trees were complicated yeah, had, even then. I had to get on some Google <laughs> to to figure it all out and who how they all related to each other. Well, all in all, there's not uh, not really a lot out here. No, but it's I mean beautiful. all the original structures are are not here anymore. But it it the land it it gives you an idea. It does. I mean this was this was a nice nice farm. It would have been a, a good it was place a big to deal be back then be born and I mean yeah. to be a landowner back then was a big deal that's kind of how you were established and stuff yeah. they do have like a little uh, replica garden out here where they would have maybe planted some of their, their crops. some of their you know, stuff to, to for personal for yeah. personal use like to eat and stuff like that Herbs because and vegetables. they were growing like tobacco and to trade to trade but to for the for the personal use to eat and stuff this would have been like where they would yeah. maybe have made their garden and just looking out over the Pope's Creek and the Potomac. Yeah. It's just been a beautiful little place to be. Oh, yeah. It'd be great to grow up here now, let alone back it's then. It's a shame no one could live here. Yeah. Because it's a beautiful <laughs> plot gorgeous. of land. But um, anyway, that, that's pretty much it. If you get yeah. a chance to come to the Fredericksburg area, man, there's just a lot of history here. If you're into that kind of thing, yeah. You know, the Founding Fathers, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, they stuff say like the, that. Three of the first five presidents are from this area. Yeah, they were born within were like born 20 here. miles of so each that's other right crazy here. crazy coincidence. So, so the, your country started right here, <laughs> yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. Um, we could have stayed here for weeks and weeks and still not seen it seen all. That, no. There's just so much to learn and so much to do. And um, not just this area, but up in the D.C., Mount Vernon area. Yeah. Uh, lots of stuff to do in this area. We're going to definitely have to we'll come back. We'll hit that back. later in the year. Yeah. Yeah. But hey... Um, that's a wrap for this video. Mm -hmm. Stick around for a few seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans while we're out on the road, everything you need to know, right down there in the description. Yeah. Appreciate you watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.